East Central ISD is getting sued by the mother of a seven year old who killed himself with a gun. Jeffrey Taylor's mother believes the school system and his first grade teacher contributed to his death two years ago. Eyewitness News reporter Marvin Hurst has more on the lawsuit and revealing documents Ken's five obtained from the school district. I saw my baby <laughs> laying there like he normally is. But when I looked to the left, I saw my gun. Lakeisha Cheney poured her heart out to me last May about the death of her son, Jeffrey Taylor. The first grader found her gun hidden in a Bible case under her bed between the night of December 20th and the morning of the 21st. It was days before Christmas in 2019. San Antonio police called the shooting a tragic accident. I was screaming. I just kept saying, Jeffrey, why? I told you to hold on. I was going to kick it. I was going to take it. She and her husband take responsibility for the child finding the gun. But Cheney believes her son's school system, East Central ISD, and her son's teacher at Salado Elementary School are responsible too. So she's suing them. The school district, uh, we're aware that Jeffrey uh, was a, diagnosed with ADHD. They, of course, failed to accommodate that through their actions. The lawsuit says Taylor was the only black student in his class. He had attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and got ridiculed about both. And during racial slurs and even physical assaults, they allege his teacher violated district policy by not reporting the child's claims. The lawsuit says the educator isolated the boy's emotions even more by moving his desk away from students. Attorneys for the district responded to that in a court filing, saying that the teacher was not accused of excessive force if the allegation is true. She and the district, they say, are immune from this lawsuit. I think the even more egregious part is uh, the racial discrimination that occurred in the classroom that they were on notice of, but that they failed to address. Jeffrey's mother says he shared his schoolhouse misery the day before he died. Misery, she believes, evolved into suicide. A Bear County autopsy says there were no witnesses to Jeffrey's death. It also says the gun barrel was close to his head, but not held against the skin at the time it was fired. So death investigators ruled it an accident because they couldn't find clear evidence of foul play or suicide. Cheney says her son's words are the proof. He was very adamant that he did not want to go back to that school. He begged. He begged me that day. He said, please don't send me back. I said, I'm not. I'm after laying Jeffrey to rest, she wanted answers from his school. The day after his funeral, on January 8th, the school's principal sent Cheney a letter saying an investigation was complete after speaking with students who sat near or played with Jeffrey. Plus, they cast a wider net with cafeteria monitors, teachers, and a P.E. coach. They said there was no evidence of anyone calling him the N-word, snaggletooth, and ugly. But the documents we got from the district accused Jeffrey of bullying a female student. At least that's what the girl's mother said. And his teacher's alleged response was, don't gossip to me. A parent-teacher conference sheet reveals Jeffrey's teacher asked his mother to address her son's bossiness and him being kinder to his classmates. Also in documents released to us by the district, Jeffrey's parents weren't the only ones who had a problem about how the district handles bullying and harassment. There are dozens of grievances, and we are unclear of the outcome because the school system is being silent. It's so hard for people to wrap their heads around the fact or the possibility that a child that young could be bullied could be pushed to the point where he would take a gun and take his own life. Anyone who claims that their child was bullied in this instance, their child is still alive. In this situation, this young man has taken his life. And he's taken his life because the bullying and the racial harassment got so outrageous that he couldn't take it anymore. We did find this letter from a parent whose child was Jeffrey's school friend. 
riding the district after the first grader's death, trying to figure out how to explain he was never going to see Jeffrey again. The letter says that the friend came home from school one day after learning of Jeffrey's death from another six-year-old child. The letter continues with, quote, I asked a school employee if a memorial was going to be held in Jeffrey's honor. Her response was, no, it would cause chaos with the students. I asked if Jeffrey's parents had a say, and her response was, no, end quote. The parent called the situation a missed opportunity where Jeffrey was a child who deserved recognition and staff and students should have counseling. As East Central ISD wrote us back in May, the superintendent wrote to the parent that East Central offered counseling services to Jeffrey's family, and the district provided extensive support to friends and Jeffrey's classmates. Well, back here in the present, we asked the school district to provide us any documentation to show their counseling effort. We also asked them to show us any letters that they sent home to parents about Jeffrey's death. We also asked them for an interview with the superintendent. He conducted an investigation to get to the bottom of these allegations. The district declined our request for an interview, giving no reason, and they say the communications that we requested, the texts or the emails, they don't exist. They say everything that they did was over the phone. We did see this email from the district's executive director of student and community services four days after that friend's parent wrote school officials, quote, we've gotten some negative feedback from a different parent on our response to the situation. We need to huddle up tomorrow and draft a letter to parents, maybe. I'll call you, end quote. I'm a mother, and I'm sure they're parents, too. So far, no hearing date is set to sort out Jeffrey's case in federal court for a mother looking for answers. What if it was your child? What would you do? How would you react? Marvin Hurst, Kins 5 Eyewitness News. A social worker with the district sent Jeffrey's mother a resource guide on support and guidance during her grief. The district has filed a motion to dismiss the lawsuit. Jeffrey Taylor's story is included in A Different Cry, a digital series focused on the rising suicide rate of black youth. You can watch it on a Roku and Fire TV streaming apps this Sunday. Then on February 1st, we'll premiere a 30-minute special on our streaming apps. Look for us on your Roku or Amazon Fire.